<laughs> we rolling. We rolling. Yeah, it's really hard. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? By doing that. We gave him yeah. the free yeah. In my opinion, that sucks. What that? Uh, playoffs. Playoffs? Talk about playoffs? We talking me? Playoffs? playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. So we can win a game. Right. That's what the Colts are screaming right now. <laughs> Hey, 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 what up, Podcast Land? It's your boy, Brentel. We got Mike on the line. What up, Mike? What's going on? We got Kirsch on the line. What's up? Yo, yo. Yeah, and we are talking playoffs, y'all. Um, how's everybody been doing, first off? Everybody good? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. All right, now we got that uh, out the way. Uh, let's talk about that. Let's start off with following up on the Lonzo Ball, John, Lon, yeah, Lon, John Wall face off. Um, I said John Wall was going, he was going to put Lonzo Ball through the ringer, and I was wrong. I actually thought the Wizards was going to win the game. John Wall had a phenomenal game. He had an okay game. He was pressed, trying to do too much, trying to show up. LeVar Ball and the Lakers got the win Lonzo didn't score much but he was he was efficient and he helped to contribute to the win in other other ways besides scoring uh what do you guys think what did you guys think when y'all seen the box scores and heard about the game uh to me it it does Justice of you guys saying that John Wall is a top point guard defender. So, I mean, Lonzo clearly didn't score. He shut him down. Whether he was trying to show up and show out and he fell on his face or not, I mean, he still shut him down on defense. So, um, in my opinion, I, I don't know why y'all are off of his bandwagon, but hey, y'all do. I didn't say I didn't say I was off any bandwagon. Oh, that was just perfect. You you spoiling for the show anyway, but. uh <laughs> Go ahead, Kirsch. <laughs> um, basically, I felt like John Wall tried to do too much, uh-huh. and he he has a tendency of doing that, um, trying to uh, basically prove himself that he's on Russell Westbrook and Kyrie's level, and he's not. So you don't think he? Okay, where is he then? If he's not, he's that. Level. He's the next tier, whatever that is. So he's like, he's one B. He's he's a he's a bench bench point guard. Who? He's of the stars. He's the bench point guard. He's the sixth man. Oh, you saying okay? So you saying he's definitely second tier, second string out of the superstars? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, don't know I, think, that far. I think calling him a superstar would be nice too. You said it's being too nice. I think it's being nice. Wow. I mean, if we, I, I can't, I can't say that about my man because he, because he, like I said, uh, I, he was my first point guard. You know, he, the downfall to John Wall is that he be pressed and he. When uh, he's challenged, or when he takes when he takes something personal, he tries to do too much, and he doesn't know how to play within the flow of the game. That's John tries, Wall's. That's John Wall's weakness. He tries to be Westbrook, and he doesn't have Westbrook skills. I, that's that's no, I don't I don't think that. I don't think that. Why? Because. If you if you with, with the ball with the ball, John Wall is the fastest player in the league, going from end to end. That's where he 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 he's the most dangerous in transition, but he's also very dangerous in a half court setting. So I feel like athletically. He's on that Russell Westbrook level. 
atenção. É just a matter of well, if we gonna, if we gonna say he trying to do he trying to be like Westbrook, Westbrook be pressed too. Low key. If we being honest. Why you think KD ain't there no more? I feel like Westbrook is superior to John Paul. How old is Westbrook? Huh? He's a better shooter, first of all. They about neck and neck, for real, for real. If we being honest, they really about neck and neck. If we being honest, for real. I think I think in the big games, Westbrook understands the uh, the moment better than John Wall. Like in in, in my opinion, in this situation take. Take OKC's team from last year. Played against the Lakers with uh, Lonzo. Of course, Westbrook's going to get his, but he's going to. Um, I think he played a little bit more like how Kobe used to play. Get his his one or two people involved and let the game come to him a little more. But I think John Wall just kind of presses and. At the end, it kind of hurts his running mate, Brad Beal, because he plays off a of rhythm. I feel like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, th- 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 that thing is getting that whole Bradley Beal, uh, John Wall, you know, we just going to take over in the late games. That shit, that shit over with. Because they got that man Otto there. Otto's he been playing it's a continuation of the playoffs last year like I said last year Otto was the most consistent player last year in the playoffs and that's been the the same this year so far what I'm gonna say is John Wall is still averaging 22 points and 10 assists a double double every game and he He played defense and he played defense That's, that's why I said I don't believe I don't believe that he's Second tier, I just think he he be trying to do too much, man. But he's still too old. He too old to be dispressed. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, okay, is that is that is that a faction of when he was when he was on his apex up? Kyrie kind of cut the line and took some of that status that he was getting that he was supposed to get. And those like three or four years ago, you remember that Kyrie kind of jumped. His status jumped up before he kind of jumped in front of John Wall when after the big before before the big three. Kyrie Kyrie his ascension start and actually once once LeBron came back, Kyrie was ahead of John Wall in in far as like you know publicity and talk in the basketball world, like who's better or whatnot. And he, he, I can see why he feel like he got to prove something because he, you know, he been stepped over. But he's still too old to be this press. Mike, oh, why you say naturally though? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, Curse, you, you for sure off the bandwagon. Yep. So you selling your stock. <laughs> Here now, he he's selling his stock, Mike. I'm gonna buy. It. I'm gonna buy this stock. Oh really? Yeah, I'm, gonna right. buy, I'm gonna buy Kirsch's stock that he's selling. Cause hey, I'm gonna keep my my share. And I'm gonna buy Kirsch's shares. I, I can we split that share? Cause I, I still think Conwall <laughs> is a, a, a superstar. I split it with. I mean, you. <laughs> double doubling, you know. And he the best on, on on both ends, night in and night out. Right. But it's not like, you know, Bradley Beal got to guard the best man. You know what I mean? John yeah, Wall, he'll take that. He'll take that responsibility on. So, I got. I got to ride with him, man. That's my guy. That's my guy. 
And for the, the comment that he's the fastest guy in the league with the ball, I want to see him race Russell. Oh, for sure. I, I, I put money down on that. John Wall, fa- the fastest with the ball. I want to see the race. That would be a good race, though. <laughs> I think I think you gotta uh, mention Kyrie in that race too. With no. the ball? No, Kyrie's no. not where near greater athletes as those guys. You talking about quick with the ball? It has moves. <laughs> yeah, then we talking to Kyrie. Like first step? Okay. Oh, first step? It's easy. I give him like he in the conversation. Yeah, but for but for the whole length of the floor. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. Sorry, you got a bad wheel, Kirsch. Yeah. Definitely. Like, if we talking like from three, three feet in, uh, from three pointer in, that man is. is awesome. that, but... <laughs> Where's Brendan? <laughs> um, Tony Parker was there. At, yeah, for a long time. For a long time. Yeah. He ain't no more, but yeah. Uh, he did. Well, he, I... blew, he blew a tire last year, didn't he? I think Steve Nash versus Tony Parker back in the day would have been a good race with the ball. Um, nah, it did. No, nah, it would have been if we talking race from back in the day. It would have been Jason Kidd and uh, he, Tony Parker. Jason Kidd was slow. What? Yes, he was slow. Curse, you hear this man? Jason. Yeah, he 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 is not off. Oh. <laughs> y'all tripping y'all. Thank you, Curse. Are y'all serious Him and Mark Jackson had the same speed No Are y'all serious Y'all need to go back Y'all need to go back and look Not not 2010 Jason Kidd We talking about 94 Jason Kidd Oh well, that's what, that's right. what you mean y'all, y'all forgetting somebody very important I, I kind of feel some way about it Who is that A guy who played in Philly for a long time Oh AI Hey, uh, yeah. well, no, hey, you're right. My bad. No, that, no disrespect. And I'm, about, and I'm not talking about Andre Iguodala. Yeah, I forgot about AI. Yo. He used to kill. Remember in the All Star games, he just seemed so much better than everybody. Because he mm-hmm. was running that speed all the time. Right. Um. All right, moving on. Uh, we got the OKC. The, um, Oklahoma City Thunder team uh, private plane traveling from Minnesota <laughs> to Chicago. They landed and then the players noticed something strange in front of the plane. I took pictures and there's a huge dent in the front of the plane, the nose of the plane. Giant dent. Like They didn't realize that they hit something. I'm, I'm assuming that the pilots didn't either. Well, you know what? What would cause a dent this size? So I wanted to go into a conversation of: Is there aliens or not? What do you guys? Oh my- where do you guys stand at? Where do you guys stand at on this subject? Basketball. You said what? I thought we was talking basketball. We're gonna derail right now. Are you taking this into the next segment about movies? <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, man. We, did, did you see the dent? No, nah, I didn't see the dent, but bro, you got to see this shit, though. Google that shit real quick. This I don't think crazy. that we're alone. Huh? I don't think that we're alone. I'm gonna leave it at that. Oops. All right, we we on the same page then. Okay, moving on. Oh, uh, now we're gonna move on to the semifinals part of the podcast, where I wanted to talk about your man Markel Fultz, uh, sh- shoulder injury. I just got an update like ten minutes ago, saying that he was out indefinitely with a shoulder injury, with that uh, right shoulder injury. Well, it looks like the Celtics made great picks in getting rid of IT and his injury and not picking Markel Fultz and his injury. But he got hurt. He got hurt after um, summer so, leaves. He wasn't. He was hurting cup. 
Really? So I, yeah, he gonna be injury prone like Trap. <laughs> well, he on the right team. Y'all you know, said was because I, I think Kyrie turned a new leaf over this year. So you talking too soon? I, I I don't think that he's honestly going as hard as he used to. I think he has matured and is allowing the game to come to him. Or that's Brad Stevens' system, one of the two. Oh yeah, he got he's it, y'all got to understand. We talked about this a couple podcasts ago. Man, Kyrie, when he was on the team by himself, he was 19 and on a shitty team with a shitty coach and had just a shitty organization in general. You know what I'm saying? People are like, oh, he didn't take Cleveland nowhere. Cleveland was nowhere when he oh, got there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And who? Juan Jackson? Right. Like, come on, bro. Uh, Looks like he is... Well, hopefully, this is his agents doing because, like, initially they was talking about, you know, his 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 agent came out and said, oh, he was just gonna try to tough it out for his team. Talking about Markel Fultz and his shoulder, right? Um. Then the 76ers media uh, press team comes out and says, you know, he he got. He got fluid drained from his shoulder. Then they come back and say that he's actually getting a quarter zone shot. So there's, you know, miscommunication with, you know, the media teams on both sides. Look, if, if he can't play, he can't play. Instead of having him out there lowering his stock, why not just pull him out and let him heal for the rest of the year instead of having this young kid changing his shot form and like unnecessary shit. I feel like somebody need to be fired on the Philly staff and Markel <laughs> Fultz's agent needs to be fired as well because that's that's uncalled for. What are y'all thoughts on? I, mean, I don't really have thoughts. He was a rookie, so... I mean, he wasn't going to prove nothing this year anyway. Right. Ben Simmons team. <laughs> I just hope he can come back and be, you know, what he was in college to where, you know, he can catch and shoot from like 22 feet, 23 feet. And yeah, be that for he, Ben Simmons. He and, can produce. Yeah, yeah. And slash to the rim because that's really what they drafted him for because he, he, he him having no, that particular set of skills fits in with Ben Simmons running the point. So hopefully they can, uh, Get him healed up and come back out and, and ball out like and look like a number one draft pick next year. Um, Mike, your Celtics, they were granted your the uh, disabled player exception. It's time to go get us a free agent, boys. What was that? I think it was Thursday. Thursday, yeah. How do you feel? Kirsch, essentially, we are granted $8.4 million that we can use on one player with an expiring contract or we can trade to get a player mm-hmm. um, with an expiring contract. So uh, I still think that we're going to find somebody. We're going to get somebody. But uh, I do I do want to uh, throw a little something at Kirsch. Uh, scoreboard. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, the Heat lost yesterday to the Celtics, so I had to say that. Oh, uh, I didn't even catch that. Um, yeah, but I, I think we're gonna we're gonna definitely go go get somebody. I hope we don't trade a draft pick for somebody. Um, but I think that we're definitely going. Hey, spe- especially if you trade a draft pick for an expiring, that's kind of stupid. Right. I still think Embiid would be a good pick for us. You think they're gonna trade him? Uh, I mean, to get rid of his cap space, they probably would. The Mavericks would. You say Embiid? Or not Embiid. Uh, New Orleans Noel. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, man. Oh. 
did y'all catch that Orlando Magic have the best record in the East right now? I did, I did. What were you saying, Mike? You were saying something in pre-production. What were you saying? I told y'all it was going to be fun to watch. But you said this. Okay. You did say fun to watch. That uh, that was your um, league pass pick, right? Yep. I have, I, like, I've been watching them. I've been watching them. I'm still kind of disappointed in, in Hazonia. I want I want to see more production from him. But it's like a, it's like a ragtag bunch, and they're just finding ways to win games. They do have Frank Vogel as a coach now. So. They're going to grind it out. Yeah. And then, I mean, the the other night, I, I, I turned and I started watching him. And Alfred Payton was on the bench because he was hurt. And I was like, man, so shit. They ain't even got Alfred out there. Alfred is a workhorse. You know what I mean? He's a traditional point guard. He played play on both ends of the floor. Um, I don't know, man. They, I, 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 they, they remind me of that Sacramento team like three years ago when they came out the gate and they were in the playoffs for a long time. They were like one of the top seeds. And then Boogie got sick. And then they just had it just spiral down, nose spiral down to the bottom of the conference. And that was like probably they were in the running to like, I want to say early November, mid November. They were in it, and then Boogie got sick. That's what they remind me of. That I think they're go- that, that's going to be one of their. That's going to be the story of their season this year. Somebody going to get hurt, and then or sick, or something like that, suspended, something. Uh, yeah, I think that it's uh, we need to call Brendan, and get him on the line, see what's going on with his one and four bowls. Oh, we expect, we expected that. We we said that was gonna that was gonna. Well, we knew. He just right. find, he finding out that what we said was right. Because <laughs> we knew that was going straight to the lottery. Uh, is, is Zach Levine back yet? Uh, I don't think so. Yep. The Hawks have a worse record than they do. Oh, we knew that was. Yep, we knew those were two teams that we picked to not make it to the playoffs. And the Mavericks are one and six. Too. Yo, that'd be crazy if the ma- if 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 the magic here, here, make it to the map. Yes. I think I think the Mavericks are probably gonna end up with the best pick in this draft. Hey, who who is the who is the number one player of this next draft coming up? Who's the guy? Michael Porter. Michael Porter, what is he? Uh, small forward, power forward. Ooh. So he got it. Kind of got a game like young LeBron ish, or young Melo. Um, I don't know. What he's doing there. Okay, I'm gonna have to check him out. Yeah, Michael Porter definitely is number one though. That was the one that was uh number one player in the country last year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. from Washington. Yeah, he's nice. Oh, he's from DC. No, he's from Was- the state of Washington. He played oh. on Roy. Uh, no, he's not. He he's from Columbia, Missouri. Oh, okay. Who was the one that played on uh, Roy's team out there? He's six ten, two fifteen. They compare him to like a KD or a Joe John. Mm. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I forgot that the Cavs still could get that number one pick from the Nets. I don't know, man. Brooklyn, they're fun. They're fun to watch this year. They've been beating people. I think they're going to fuck it up. <laughs> I think Brooklyn's going to fuck it up. But then uh, they have Mar- Marvin Bagley, number two, from Duke. He's a freshman. What is what is he? Shoot two guard, one guard? What is he? Power forward. Okay. Then wow. they have DeAndre Ayton. They, they compare him to Lamar Odom. Oh, whoa. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, Mohamed Bambia from Texas. <coughs> Luka Donick from Slovenia. Jaren That's Jackson. the dude I was talking about, Curse. That's the dude. What is he? What is he, Mike? 
he's a he's a <laughs> shooting guard slash small forward. Oh, okay. He's six. They have him going to Orlando right now. Just this, just pre mock draft stuff. Shit, if, if he go to Orlando, that means he's only gone. They compare they compare him to Danilo Gallinari. Right, you're right. We talked about that. And then uh, let's see here. And then it is uh, Wendell Carter from Duke, Robert Williams from Texas A&M, Kevin Knox from Kentucky, Colin Sexton from Alabama. All these are freshmen or sophomores. Lamar Peters, Mississippi State, Nick Richards, Kentucky, Gary Trent Jr. from Duke. He's going to be nice. Gary Trent. Did his dad play ball? Play ball? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that name? uh, Yeah. How many picks do the Celtics got? Three? Yeah, how many? Yeah, I do want to hear about that. How many picks do they have? Three. Oh, three? Okay. All right, moving on to the, uh, what is this, conference finals, part of the podcast section, segment. I wanted to talk about um, Rob McNair's com- or Bob McNair's comments about the Houston Texans protest. And for those that don't know, you know, we, we don't talk about football much. But uh, maybe next year we will, you know, depending on circumstances. But anyway, Bob McNair is the owner of the Houston Texans. Uh, when he was questioned about um, his players protesting and, and how he felt about the protest in the league in general. Uh, what did you say? Continue on. Okay. Um, he said uh, he said of the uh, he was asked a question about um, you know protest the players that are protesting and he said we can't have the inmates running the prison. Uh, since then, like the players had to be convinced to practice because they said they weren't going to practice. They weren't going to come to the games. Like the, uh, DeAndre Hopkins has said that he is not with the shit and he wasn't coming to practice. He wasn't going to do any media engagements, anything like that. And since the fallout, Bob McNair has come back. He doubled back and made an apology saying I miss I meant words and I meant to say asylum. Either way, dog, that's fucked up. That shows that you don't look at he these tried, players as human. You look he at tried them to, as he tried units to of production. Him. But go ahead. What did you uh, say, he said he tried to um to totally back off the thing and said that he was talking about um ownership in the commissioner's office and them, which we know is total fucking bullshit. Complete bullshit. Uh, what was you? I remember you text me, uh, Doug, whatever his name is, Gottlieb. Gottlieb. Yeah. yeah. What, what was you saying? I, like, I wanted you to talk about that. He um, basically, I didn't like his tone when he was talking about DeAndre Hopkins. He was trying to wasn't necessarily defending Bob McNair, but he was saying that um, he expected DeAndre Hopkins to act the way that Hopkins acted because he doesn't have the business acumen to understand um, Bob McNair's position or something and I was like that shouldn't fucking matter like basically he's saying he's not smart enough to get the concept because that's what that's yeah. what he sounds like to me but what yes. you're saying yes exactly that's really offensive did, did he did he uh, issue an apology because I we'll, we'll wait for that who got it oh yeah. no he and, he, and he's not going to because he's not part of ESPN, which he used to be years ago. He's part of Fox Sports One, so you know Fox don't apologize for anything. Mm. <laughs> still being a public figure from the media, shouldn't he still have to apologize? I, I think so. Shit, if 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 
<laughs> if uh, well, we talking about two different um entities, but like the way ESPN try to crack down on day people, right. Should be, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. You can't say no fucked up shit. That's fucked up. Like, do you, I'm, I'm questioning your, you know, your intellect. That's fucked up. I send y'all the link later if I run across it again. But the, the way he and I, I got it. I got it pulled guy. up. I got it pulled up right now. Yeah, I, I used to be a Doug Gottlieb fan. He was he was pretty cool. He used to have the three o'clock slot on ESPN Radio. That's when I was driving truck over the road. Uh huh. But um, you know, I, I had zero talent for him now. Yeah. I Did you? I think- all of the Texans players uh, took a knee before the game. Did they? <laughs> it was about eighty-five percent of them. <laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy. And uh, Jerry Jones, we didn't talk about this. Jerry Jones is trying to stop the Roger Goodell deal. He doesn't want Roger Goodell back. It's him and a handful of other uh, owners that are that want Goodell out. If they can split, if they can split the percentages, he'll be out of there. The reason there is because of him doing this for to get him out. What'd you say, Mark? Have, they, they don't want Roger in right now because he's trying to support the players. He's trying to support what what they believe in, what they think, and what they like. He understands that it's morally and ethically it's fucked up the shit that's going on. All the nah, the, bro, the, nah. So that's, that's why he's at meetings. That's not it. That's not, let's not. If we being for real, we got to look at it like this, bro. Roger fucked up a lot of stuff. Yeah, exactly. But let me get this one out. The NFL as a whole is immorally bankrupt because they never gave a fuck about, you know, women that got beat, the kids that got beat, you know what I mean? Like sexual assaults, uh, you know, drug abuse, none of that shit. They never gave a fuck, right? But when Colin did this protest for shit that was outside of, you know, football in general, and like it was a real life problem and nobody that nobody really wants to talk about. They in, instead of instead of uh, addressing the actual issue, they publicized the protest. Right. And they and that that diverted the attention off of what the protest was for, the actual purpose, right? So the NFL as a whole, what they're trying to do now is instead of, they can't, they can't not be like, oh, we're going to shut this shit down. Why? Because there's a thing called history. They don't want to be on the bad side of the history. They don't give a fuck. Because if they did, they would, they would be, you know, initiate, initiate, initiating like programs for whatever Colin was talking about. And if the owners gave a fuck, Colin would be in the league. They boy, they, they, they boy, they blacklisted him because he brought attention and awareness to police brutality, uh, racial inequality, and, uh, all kind of racial issues in this country. Uh, That's you know what I'm saying. Like the NFL does not give a fuck. Roger Goodell does not give a fuck at all. He just knows he he doesn't want to be on the bad side of history. Right, right. And I, I mean, I agree with you about Colin Kaepernick to an extent. I mean, ultimately, his play is what what made it so that he wasn't on a team as well. I mean, what? I'm not saying. Hold on, hold on. Listen, I'm not saying that there's not teams that he could be playing on right now because he's better than their starting quarterback. But I'm and saying backups. he was given a couple of tryouts for some teams and they weighed the pros and the cons. And I'm I'm not going to deny that the NFL didn't have an influence on that. I think, I but, think it's collusion, bro. Like, I think, I think, okay, they're almost like, so to speak, it's like a band of brothers, quote unquote. Like police, you know what I mean? Where they don't go against each other. When I'm and I'm speaking about the NFL owners, right? right? So if they feel like, nah, we shutting him out. If you let him in, then you're going to be the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? We're all going to all the in, all the NFL teams. We're going to fuck you over somehow because cause you you let him back in the league. You know what I mean? I think it's that type of situation because we think about it. Think about it business wise. If he can make your team better. 
and you know he gives you an advantage at the quarterback position, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna put him on your team regardless, right? If you want to win, correct? So, so if you are, you know, you basically cutting your nose off in spite of your face to stay in line with the rest of the owners. That it's, this has to be collusion. Like everybody has to be in on this because nobody right. wants to be the, the outcast and the guy who's going to get fucked over in the long run for you know giving him a job. That's right, what you're not, shit is. Not about to cut cut the hand that's feeding you, or go against the grain. Not not cut the hand that feeds you. Go against the grain more, more so. That's more you know efficient for what you you know your point because. Well, I'm- the NFL does make the schedule on what teams are going to be nationally televised. So, Ooh, I mean, it's good point. All, all of that stuff. So, essentially, you are cutting the hand that's beating you because then they're going to be like, oh, we, we don't even want y'all to have a spotlight game. Regardless, right. if you, hey, you're still getting at least one or two spotlight games. And now they're going to be like, no, nah, you ain't getting none. Because that's what, that's essentially what sells jerseys, what sells uh, apparel, what sells tickets. I think, I like think, that. I think if you were smart, if, if I'm smart, I'm signing him. Why? Because last year he had the top selling jersey. You know what I'm saying? He had this the top selling jersey in the NFL, dog. And Marshawn Lynch is number one right now. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, what? What? Like y'all really? Y'all really going out y'all way? Y'all really hurting yourself in the long run? Because why not? I, I, okay, even if he's not a superstar, even if he, he's on a bench, this is an iconic figure. But at the end of the day, we gotta look at it. I'm looking at it wrong because, yeah, they hated they hated they hated uh, Muhammad Ali when he took his stand. Now he's celebrated. You know what I'm saying? So, and yeah. in, in, in years to come, yeah, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, he was a great guy. He was an icon for what he did. Blah blah blah. But you know, us being here, living through it, like, nah, they hated that motherfucker. They, they, you know what I'm saying? They blacklisted him out the league. Right. You know what I mean? So, I think, I think, shit, if the NFL. If the NFL want to, you know, want to solidify themselves in history, <laughs> make sure he get on the, get on a, a squad, man. I thought he would have been on the squad by now, <laughs> honestly. But he could definitely play for the Browns right now. He man, he could play for so many teams, dog. The Jets, he could play for. You know what I mean? Like he could play for a lot of teams. And like it's like instantly come in and make a team better. I just, it's just, you know, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame what he's doing. Uh, yeah. Kirsch, All right, back to back. Right. <laughs> uh, Kurt, you got anything else you want to say? Oh, matter of fact, and another thing. This is what I wanted to say. I wanted to get this off. Basically, what the NFL has done to the kneeling in general they have gentrified the protest. They yeah. they took it, and then like so many players, once once Donald Trump spoke about the NFL players calling them SOBs, everybody wanted to you know show unity, a united front, or whatever, and that totally took the attention off of the original purpose of the right. protest in general. And like ever since then, like once that happened, I was like, okay, the owners, the owners came in, they, they kneeled or whatever. It was like, almost like they did that. So, okay, we're over this now. We can stop talking about it. And then Donald Trump brought it up and made it nothing. And now they like, dang, he is the dead horse. And now we really want to do something to cover up his stupid ass running his mouth. We was already trying to do something with the players anyway. So now the NFL is really trying to save face. Yep. So, uh, now nah, we got to stay on, on college football. Yeah. It, um, hold on, hold on. Are we staying football? Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, man. Uh, my Penn State, Penn State Lions, <laughs> lost to Ohio State, which we do this every year. Every hey man, y'all ch- fucking year. Yes. Never fails. Oh, wait. Never Who was that? Fails, sub- that was, that was, uh, it sounds like, uh, Queen Nadia over there. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> I, it's hey, funny because it's funny. All I'm going to say, 
He wasn't saying, oh, wait. She was saying, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me and Curse had talked, <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. We beat them 30, you know, 38, 17, 38, 14, something like that. 38, 13, I think it was. Like, oh, shit, we about to get this win. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the first time in a long time that we actually went with the bed when we played them. Um, so me and Curse talking, you know, talking about the rundown, what we're going to talk about on the show. I look, I go back. We lost the game 38, 39, bro. I was just like, what the fuck? How? How? How, Sway? Like, what? Hey, that's how I felt in that Notre Dame, Georgia loss. But y'all suck, though. No, we don't. What the fuck? You're out of your mind. Bro, we was number two in the nation, bro. Okay, and Georgia is now number two in the nation. What do you mean? Georgia's the best team in the country right now. Y'all suck, though. I ain't talking about Georgia. Yeah, I'm talking about y'all. We lost, them. we lost to them by one point, and that's our only loss of the year. We've beaten back-to-back ranked opponents. And we're gonna oh, keep oh so USC them. being 17, that count? Say what? USC being 17, that count as a ranked team? Yeah, anybody in the top 25 is ranked. Come on, bro. And if they, if they ain't in the top 10, they don't count, bro. We don't count them. 14! We whooped that ass on USC. What, what rank are y'all? We in the top. We in the top ten. We're gonna be top, probably top five now. Now that we beat North Carolina State. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I well, bet we barely jumped. in the top ten. Okay, um, we yeah. wasn't in the top. It was number nine then. Well, we're getting that that big ass CB deal. M- NBC every goddamn every goddamn Saturday. Y'all suck. We suck. Y'all suck, man. Y'all ass, man. Wow. No, nah, I'm joking. Right. You know I don't watch college football, man. I'm just. <laughs> All I was going to say is, Kurt, you better tell him because we're going to beat the Hurricanes' ass in two weeks. Ooh. Wow. Curse, you ain't got no dogs? You ain't got no dogs in the fight, man? We ain't, we ain't talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Celtic win. All right, man. Let's go ahead and move on to that top five. Uh, movie top five uh, basketball movies in the final segment of the podcast. Is this going to be the the tender touch part to everyone's heart of our podcast? I don't know about all that, but uh, what we are going to talk about is the movies that uh, you know everyone picked. Once I could pull it up here, I'm going to guess Love and Basketball is probably number one, bro. I like we talked about it. I was like, I don't. Shout out to all the people who participated in the votes, man, on the on the podcast group. Um, Thank you all. Th- I appreciate everybody, man. Um, but look, I got to be honest. I got to be real. I got to come clean. I ain't agree <laughs> with the top five at all. I mean, I had two out of you know the five that I agree with, but those were no-brainers, right? Okay, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of a lot of chick picks, man. A lot of chick picks with um love and basketball. If I'm not mistaken, that was the, that was a top movie, wasn't it? Oh, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Just vibe to the beat real quick. Mm. Oh man, I should have had it pulled up. My fault. To the listeners. Okay, here goes the group. Oh shit, we had we had above the rim was our top voted movie. Coming in and number two was Love and Basketball. White Men Can't Jump. Number three, He Got Game. Number four, Blue Chips. Number five. Oh, I got three. I got three out of five. That ain't bad. I fuck, with, I fuck with white men can you jump to that's my favorite 
Poor Shay said that's her favorite, y'all. Um, <laughs> Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Woody Harrelson did his thing. <laughs> Um, basketball wise though like if okay I feel like the best movie out of the top five mm, damn cause Carter wasn't even in there no it wasn't I feel like between like best movie best script to me it had to be above the rim or he got game one of those two but like the way love and basketball was written was dope. Like it was just a love basketball. You know what I mean? Like that was dope. That was dope. The touching part of our segment. Yeah, that everyone. was just yeah, okay. <laughs> but you gotta go back to blue chips, man. We gotta talk like how how is blue chips barely in the top five? Like that should be like number one and number two to me. That is that is I don't feel like Ray Rowe got enough uh, love either. Who? Glory, Glory Road. Glory Road was dope. That was that was that was a dope movie too. But I'm just we talking hey, about I'm culturally, gonna... culturally yeah. like shifting. He got game above the rim, and then blue chips. Those were like dope. that shit shifted basketball. Like to me, to me, I think. Uh... The most overrated on, I'm sure, is Hoosiers. That shit, that shit ain't even getting no votes, cuz. It ain't getting no votes? No votes. At all. That's why I said it's the most overrated on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the first basketball movie ever? <laughs> What'd you say? I said I've never watched Hoosiers and I'm never going to. Right, um... Glory Road got a couple. They got a couple votes, but I mean, I thought it was a good movie, though. But I felt like I felt like the the strength of basketball movie, you know, that preceded that movie. That's why it's like it's not looked at. But you could like Blue Chips, man. Y'all can't. Y'all, you had Shaq and Penny. Doing their thing. What's what's buddy name that was from um uh uh what's it French Lick, Indiana with Larry Bird. I forgot the buddy's name. I don't think he did he play in the pros? Are you funny? I wanna say I thought it was uh Rex Chapman. Was that his that was it him? Nah, that wasn't Rex Chapman. We gotta look that shit up. But yeah. Nick Nolte. You know what I'm saying? Like that was just an iconic movie. They kind of bit from his swag from Bobby Knight throwing chairs on the, on the court. All that type of stuff, man. Like, going out in the jungle of Algiers, Louisiana to pick up Shaq. You know what I'm saying? What's the name? Bo Diumbo or whatever his name was. Like, come on, bro. Coach, you saying if I don't play, my mom can't keep her house and her job? Like, that's an iconic movie, man. Like, that shit is... And it's relevant to... What's going on today, especially with like shout out to Rick Patino paying people and buying prostitutes and shit for his players. Um he got game. Iconic. The Jordans that he had on. People call him people call those Jordans that he got games, yo. Iconic movie. Jesus Shuttlesworth. I feel like that should have been number one and two. But, hey, like I said, to everybody who voted, I appreciate you guys voting. I just I just disagree with the way it lined up. But who am I, right? <laughs> Mike, what was your top five? What, where, 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 what, what would you have been happy with? Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I'm not... I'm not mad at the top five. I would have liked to see Coach Carter in there somewhere. Uh, the discipline. Uh, I, when I watch movies, I watch movies for what is what is the morals behind it, the ethics. What are they trying to teach? What what is the the 
good foundation principles that you can teach your children or teach actual basketball players with um, when I think of that. So, um, like, like I said, Blue Chips is definitely up there because of the recruiting game and how things are actually run, and that's for sure really how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, he got game, the fundamentals, a one-on-one. You're always trying to be better than your dad sometimes. Um, <laughs> Um, there was something know. there was something that he got game that I always took with like when little little Jesus was bent over he was hunched over he's like don't never let him see you tired they supposed to be like damn he just go all day that's something that stick with you as a kid when you listen to that you know what I mean when you watch that movie um definitely right. definitely I, I, I see what you're saying Mike go ahead um I mean as far as Coach Carter you know the team principal um like the kid that didn't want to play, whatever, and then he came back and he made, hey, you gotta, you gotta do fifteen hundred suicides, fifteen hundred pushups, fifteen hundred this, and then everybody on the team, you know, the cohesion, hey, we all gonna do these together. This ain't, this ain't one man show. So um, that, um, I mean, I, I liked the, the fundamentals of uh, Glory Road as well. Um, you know, being the first team um, from Texas. That was minorities to do something that nobody has ever seen before was uh, really good. Um, of course, you know the the soft side of me loving basketball. You know everybody wishes they could grow up uh, having a chick that loves basketball as much as they do. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I mean everybody wants a, a chick that loves sports. So, I mean, that's I can't I can't deny that. Um, of course, you know, white man can't jump. That was just defeating the stereotype. <laughs> That's a streetball um, movie, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know, I know, it really didn't get a lot of love, but the LeBron, LeBron story was uh, that should have been up there a little higher in my opinion. oh hoop dreams, low key. That hoop dreams they, that that slept on too. You remember yeah. that joint with Arthur Ag and um, I forgot Buddy's name. I forgot the other guy's name. You remember the other guy's name, Kirsch? He must be asleep. <laughs> anyway, um, damn, I forgot dude's name. Hold on, because I definitely got to shout him out. Because he went to the Catholic school, right? Or did they both go to the Catholic school? Well, they both did. Might be wrong though. And you know that that movie remind me of the story behind Arthur A. G. and William Gates. That's his name. Um. It remind me of the story of how they had to bus and hit the train like two hours before to get to where they had to go. You know what I'm saying? Whatever school they was going to, playing ball at. That's the same story as Isaiah Thomas, man. That's what he had to do. You know what I'm saying? To go to the high school that he played at in Chicago. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Yep. So, yeah, and, and they was from Chicago, too, so. Um, great movie. Great movie. Great documentary, I should say. But, uh, let's see, what else we got? You want to do a, a rundown of the first week of the season, or first two and a half, first week and a half of the season, as far as yeah. that. that's, that's what you want to do, let's do it. Uh, my biggest surprise right now is uh, the Clippers. Oh, I told uh, you they was gonna be all right. They, I didn't think that they was gonna be undefeated. They lost their first game last night. I told you they was gonna be all right because they they kind of retooled, to and, you know, got rid of Chris Paul and retooled a little bit. So, yeah, I told you they was gonna be fine. I said, I said, I said, I said what fourth, fifth seed? That's what I said. They are gonna sit around by the fifth seed. That's what I said. <laughs> Memphis, Memphis are my two big, my two. I didn't think. So. I mean, I thought they was gonna be like middle of the pack, you know, middle of the road. I didn't think that they was gonna be a top five team anymore. And they, uh, they coming out the gate with some proof. It's really surprising. They still got the same coach, right? Uh, uh, if I'm not I mistaken, yeah, I think so. I think they still got Fizdale. But they, they, they still the tough team. 
even though they, they got rid of Tony Allen and Zebo, they still got a tough core and, you know, their identity. They still got the same principles. Y'all, we're going to play defense and we're going to grind it out. That's what you, you know, that's what you, when you go to Memphis, that's what, that's what, they, and they go get under your skin. Cause they got, they, what, they got Draymond in trouble? What is it? And then they got uh, James Harden in trouble? Uh, yep. So it's like, you know, they're going to be scrappy. That's what they do. Uh, who else? Who else are you looking at that's surprising you besides Orlando in the East? Uh, in the East, the Nets. Well, I thought they were still going to be bottom of the barrel. Oh, they, st- gonna... they still going to be bottom of the barrel. They just having fun now. They having fun. You got to let them injuries set in, and you know, once they hit that that West Coast trip, you know what I mean. Get their ass whooped out there, and then come back. You know, now all of a sudden they <laughs> they five hundred. Now they below five hundred. You know what I mean? They just let yeah. the, it's gonna happen. Um. Minnesota, man. Minnesota, really? They they gelling. They they're gonna be a tough out. They're gonna be a tough out this year. I think three and three right now. They're gonna be a tough out. Watch because they, the games they won, they, had, they stole them. Huh? Yeah. The Jazz are the Jazz are gelling in five five hundred two, just like the Thunder. Mm-hmm. But what is surprising me about all of that is that Carmelo is the leading scorer on the Thunder. That's because he played with the second unit, and he'd be eating. He'd be eating on the second unit, dog. He not not not, not saying that he come off the bench. He get a lot of minutes. He carries the second unit, and he plays the the the, the home stretch of the games too. And Melo gonna get buckets. So I will, I'm not surprised at that at all. And uh, PG and uh, Russ, they're they're the same right now. Uh, averaging scoring the same, so that's. It seems like it's, PG still trying to figure it out. What do you think? How do you feel about him? Yeah, I I think that it's just a little pit stop for him. He gonna he gonna get better as the year go on. It's not really his forte to be there, mm-hmm. but I think it's a pit stop for him going forward. So I mean, he'll be all right. Definitely. That's that's pretty much all. I was shocked. I was shocked by. So far this year, who's your who's your uh, way too early MVP? Uh, right now, right now, right now, I have to go with Giannis. No denying that. I mean, his assists are down from last year. I mean, he's averaging thirty-five points, so. But he's uh, still leading it. He's leading his team in yeah, every statistical five, category. Five assists a game, two two steals, one block. Uh, my my early way too early is Boogie. Oh, well, he averaging uh, thirty right now, ain't he? Thirty-two. Yeah, but. He's doing he, well. He was doing it all without, uh, you know, the brow, uh, Anthony Davis, because mm-hmm. he. So that 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 was a, a huge surprise for me to see that. I think that he could keep it going too, averaging you know fourteen rebounds a game. He's averaging the same amount. Well, no, he's average actually more assists a game than Giannis. Um, so that's. And what's crazy is Steph Curry. Uh, He's third in points per game, but he's averaging the same amount of assists a game as those two are. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> See, averaging the same amount as a scoring guard. That's crazy. Right. Right. That's why, I, I mean, as far as that's, I mean, Giannis is playing the most minutes a game, so it's sort of expected, but him and LeBron, those are one and two. Well, I wanted to ask you something. If you had a point guard, about where do you want your point guard to average an assist a game? Uh, to be honest with you, if he's, you know, getting to the rack and he's clearing it out and getting open open looks, I mean, for the team, they passing the ball around, he's pick and roll, getting, you know, assists off of that too. I mean, I want, him, I want my point guard to average a double-double. 
That's how I feel too, Mike. Ten points, ten assists. I mean, if you I don't can't know about get ten points, you gotta give me fifteen. Maybe give me give me sixteen, seventeen a game. But that I mean, what I'm saying is, I mean, you gotta at least score ten. Like <laughs> Dray- Draymond's averaging. You got the middle school double doubles and shit. Yeah, yeah, he's he's averaging eight points a game right now with eight assists and like what ten rebounds. But still, like you gotta at least get ten points, bro. <laughs> but he don't really have to. You know what I'm saying? That's the crazy part about it. He understands, and that's how secure he is in his role on the team. That he knows, like, I ain't got to do that. I got I got stuff. I got KD. I got, you know what I'm saying? Then we got Clay out here can just light it up at any given night. I don't, I mean, I don't blame him. Bro, you got to average 10 points. <laughs> hey, man, Rodman didn't, you know? He, he's, he they Rodman. Eight slash point guard. Eight points, eight assists, or just rebounds, and seven point three rebounds a game. Oh no, I mean, he only got seven rebounds. He got to average at least at least give me fifteen. Dog. <laughs> I'm saying, I mean, what what is really intriguing to me right now is uh, Houston and the way that they're gelling. I mean, if you look at the numbers, Chris Paul and James Harden they averaging twenty assists a game. Both of them's averaging a double double. So, I mean, they're playing pretty well. But can they sustain and keep it going? I want to see if they're going to fight. <laughs> For real. They, <laughs> I just want to see the fight. Because you know it's going to come down to it. Come on, bro. Come on. It's only so long until, you know, Chris Paul actually show up. And, you know, uh, the real Chris Paul. Chris Paul only played one game and he had four points, but he had ten assists. <laughs> Shit. How you feel about that? Him, 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 uh, being hurt for three to four weeks, so, so to speak. Do you think it's you know his agent saying that so they can move him or or what? Where does he need to be moved to? He just moved. He wanted to go to Houston. Do you think he's? I'm sorry. Oh, do you think he's happy there? I I think he's getting paid there, and if you're making that kind of money, you better be happy wherever you at. I mean, is he like happy playing basketball there? Like getting the touches, the looks, the the things he wants? Probably not. We'll see. We'll see. You got anything yeah. else, though? I'm ready to get out. You ready to get out? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm gravy. Gravy train. Hey, uh, I'm going to say one thing for y'all. You know, go Steelers tonight. I need Le'Veon Bell the ball out so I can win my fantasy game. Yo, dog. And I need Ben to finally do something, man. I lost both my quarterbacks. I, had 70, I left 74 points on the bench last week. <laughs> Dead ass, like I went and got uh, Derek Carr out of um, out of the trash. Somebody, somebody dropped him. I had Amari Cooper. He ain't did Check. shit all year. <laughs> he been on my bench just sitting. I go look, I look. Curse like, yo, you should have played. Fucking blah 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 blah. I'm like, go look. Like forty, what the fuck? What the forty four points? And, and uh, Derek Carr got thirty. Like what? Yeah, man. Yep. Lost Damn last it. week too, bro. Uh, Russell Wilson had thirty-five today. You had him on the bench too, didn't you? Nah, that's who I was playing against. I need Big Ben to go the fuck off against Detroit. Is he at home <laughs> or on the road? Oh, uh, it's at Detroit. Oh yeah, you gonna lose. He don't play well on the road. It's close to home. No, nah, he don't play well on the road, bro. Bro, this game already over with. Like, look, I have 74.4 points, and uh, the dude I'm playing has 158.9. Oh, yeah, you might as well go ahead and pack that. Go on ahead and go home. All right, y'all. That's, that's that's the other league. In our league, you know, I'm I'm busting ass, taking names. You know, ain't no thing but a G thing over here. <laughs> you 5-1? and one? You 5-1? I and one. one game. You, you ain't undefeated. Oh, I, I have. I only lost one game. Oh, did it, I beat you, didn't I? 
Uh, I don't know who. Let me see. I think I beat you. But uh, anyway, no, um, you did. I, I I I beat somebody. I know I beat somebody. Um, that wasn't my only win. But I'm saying, like I said it, like I, I beat only one once. But I thought I beat. Tell me, he's nah. You lost. You lost. One fifteen, one ten. Ah, okay. I must have lost something oh. on the bench. I lost the first game of the season by two points. Oh, was, that's rough. Yeah, that's real rough. But I'm blowing Brendan out right now. I mean, that's just that's pretty typical, though. I mean, you know, he he is he's pretty trash. His team yeah, is trash. But all right, bro. Thanks for being on the call. I don't know where Kirsch went. His phone probably died, or he probably left it on mute. Who knows? Uh, um, I appreciate you, dog. Hey, no problem, man. Peace and love, man. I appreciate you having me. All you right, know, no uh, doubt. We'll talk to you soon. All right, be safe. All right, you too.